I mean, I remember watching the Battle for the Olympias back in the day, and I, you, you were very close with Nasser El Sambati. So how did you how to how do you two become friends? Was it from the tours or from just well, how how was it? Uh, first, simply for the reason uh, that we, he spoke German. Oh, okay, okay. You know, so I remember uh, at the European tour, we didn't talk at the Olympia in '96. At the European tour, we were sitting, uh, I think, at the airport in Frankfurt, mm -hmm. and he said, "Hey." Get me my bag over there. From the, you know, I said, "Fuck you, get your own bag." You know. <laughs> Did you? That was, that was the first time we talked, so he he kind of found that fascinating, you know. So yeah. So uh, started talking, and then um, during the year, I visited him in uh, in San Diego. Mm -hmm. uh, he came to Switzerland. I always kind of organized some guest postings for him, and the guy was absolutely fascinating. And what I liked about him so much was. Uh, he didn't give me anything when he came to bodybuilding, you know, I mean, there was, he told me nothing, you know, I mean, even when I asked him questions, wow. you know, says, I, can't, I can't believe this, crazy. You say so dry and it'd be so big and, and he was just swaveling around and got into Spanish war and, you know, and then <laughs> he knew exactly what he was doing. I, I thought, wow, he's crazy, you know, was talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, he knew, I'm not going to tell this guy how to dry out, you know, mm -hmm. well, he gave one piece of advice in like five years of friendship, you know, four years, he's like, uh, maybe you should double up the provider on the last two weeks before the show, you know. It, so, so that is all the advice he gave you in... Uh, he, yeah. he talked about anything else other than bodybuilding, you know, anything. Right. I mean, except the rumors in the scene, you know, he was big into that kind of stuff. But what I found so fascinating about him, uh, I mean, you could tell him, hey, what do you know about the Spanish war? Yeah. Then you can't could start to listen for three hours. The guy never stopped talking, uh, you know, wow. about slavery. And uh, I found that fascinating. I knew he has some kind of photographic memory or something like that, you yeah. know? Yeah. Uh, but I think he was also a little bit too smart, not for his own good. Right. You know, so when things didn't go right for him, there was always this crazy conspiracy, you know? And uh, yeah, I was a little sad. And I remember at the end, we always say to each other, during uh, those nights and we stayed up in San Diego talking about uh, who knows what uh, once. Hey, buddy. You... <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry, which, sorry, which of your 21 cats is this, John Pierre? He has, actually has 21 cats. He told me before we started filming. Well, I have a cat rescue. We get to that later. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. How are we not friends? <laughs> yeah. Cool. Come on, continue. I'm loving, other, this. Uh, I'm loving this, by the way. This is awesome. We always say to each other, you know, we talked about those guys who don't uh, get the right moment to retire, you know, who just keep going and keep going. Yeah, and say, yeah, yeah. Let's be honest when we see on the other one that this is no, there's no point to it anymore. And I remember when he dropped to uh, 15th or so at the Olympia. 2002, yeah, when he had the, the stuff in his shoulders and stuff. I thought that yeah. was, you could tell he was in good condition, but it was like, yeah, maybe maybe you need to just find a new you know, so a new role in the industry or maybe just uh, stop competing, you know? So, and I remember there was hardly a separation between shoulders and arms anymore. And, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It, it's just, just kind of sad to watch him deteriorate like that. Mm. And I told him during a phone conversation, I said, hey, you think that's the time now, you know? Mm. He was so, I mean... <laughs> was he? He's pissed so, off. Oh, yeah, he didn't talk to me for six months, guy, you know? So I think that was kind of like the not so, you know, he was a little bit with his conspiracies and this stuff. But, you yeah. know, that was at the end more. Uh, the, the guy I met was absolutely funny and fascinating, uh, you know. So mm -hmm. the guy could eat. I've never seen anything like it. I, <laughs> you know, really? I, I, he even met my family and uh, at the airport in Zurich. We went to a breakfast buffet and in front of my uh, mother-in-law. He ate uh, six apple apple cakes <laughs> right in front of nothing. Uh, six of them. She looked. Him. She, she never seen anything like it huh? <laughs> and then after, after the sixth one he looked at her and he said oh shit they taste like cake i like shit, <laughs> they taste like shit. <laughs> okay <laughs> wow. but the guy was absolutely and i remember in the 96 tour yeah uh, there was spain and then germany and england england yeah he was uh, that was the best nasa i ever saw in fact because dory and i heard was sick that and he'd messed up on i'd heard that he'd messed up on diuretic and if you remember at the british grand prix he wasn't he nearly wasn't going to do it and he crashed down and he was dry and shredded but he was very i think he dropped apparently dropped about 240 ish and nasa and delet just got bigger and, bi and nasa just uh, completely dwarfed dorian in that one i thought dorian was very lucky to win that especially the second week when dorian didn't come back yeah uh 
Switzerland, Hungary, and then Russia. I mean, it was just absolutely crazy. I also felt in Germany uh, when they were standing next to each other. I, I it's like you say, he really dwarfed them, but it was not yeah. Dorian sick week. Yes, no, I heard he was, because um, he looked great at the, Dorian looked great at the 96 German, and I think it was between the German and the British, something happened, because I remember seeing him backstage, and I was thinking, Dorian looks kind of small for Dorian, you know, it was like, he wasn't what I'd seen from, from previous years, you know, because I'd seen Dorian compete in, you know, all the other Grand Prix, 94, 92, so I was a bit like, wow, and NASA just came out, and he was bursting full, and he was shredded and striated, and he was so impressive, I mean, I've got, I've actually got slide photos that I took for Muscle Mag, uh, which were used in the magazine. And I've got the pictures and you can see like Dillette and, um, and NASA either side of Dorian. And it's like, if Dorian hadn't been so good from the back and so detailed, I think he'd have lost that. And it's amazing how, you know, he, he always had a relatively high fat percentage, even in shows. Mm. You know, when you've seen him sitting, when you've seen him sitting on a chair, uh, you know, he was never as lean as I was. Okay. But he found a way to dry out with that extreme size. Yeah. And absolutely incredible in, on, on stage. I mean, I don't know how his back would have looked like 10, 50 pounds lighter if that even would have made a difference. And if he still would have been this impressive, it's hard to say, you know. Yeah. Since that was all the reason why he uh, didn't win every show. Yeah? But yeah, fascinating guy. Yeah.